Are you tired of checking your neighborhood's load shedding schedule? Well, today we are talking about solar power solutions. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Let's get lit. Our guest today is a professional who focuses on designing strategies and for business units as well as products for customer segments in line with the, with the customer's needs as well as the market trends. She's a product portfolio manager at APSA Home Loans. Let's give a warm welcome to none other than Pusha Letlape. Pusha, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening to me and thank you so much for having us uh, this evening. Good evening to the private property family and good evening to Sisha as well. Thank you. Today's second guest finds himself in a position that supports his vision of ensuring a better future for all. He's the head of renewable energy, retail, and business banking for the Abso Group. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Vishay Ravipal. Vishay, thank you so much for joining us as well. Thank you, and good evening to me and the viewers joining in today. I really do feel that this is quite a pertinent, a pertinent and relevant topic for us to be discussing, especially what we're all experiencing, right? with the recent load shedding, as well as for those that are not aware, as of the 1st of June, we've now municipalities have basically implemented their tariff increases. So thanks, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. No, looking, to, looking forward to jump straight into it and provide solutions um, for the private property family watching tonight. So let's jump in and talk, why, why is solar considered one of the easiest ways, you know, to begin your journey of greening a home? Um, Vishay, I'll start with you. So, you know, we are seeing increased utilization uh, and acceptance of solar energy technologies. I mean, with the ease of installation, the decreasing cost of this technology, and, you know, along with technology advancements, as well as supportive reforms that we've seen as a country, consumers are increasingly moving towards becoming prosumers, a terminology I use for someone who is both a producer as well as a consumer of electricity. Apart from that is solar energy is free as it comes from the sun and it can be used to power your home. So solar PV energy and systems use radiation to generate electricity and Africa has an abundant source of this resource. Even on cloudier days, I mean, if you were to look at the radiation map of the country, on cloudier days, we have more energy than anywhere else in countries such as that of Japan or Germany, who are the leaders when it comes to adopting these technologies. Just showing you how much of free energy we have in our country. Sure. No, thank you so much for that. And um, Portia, you know, with all that um, Vishal has said, a lot of people still believe that solar is unaffordable. <laughs> is this true? And if, if not, how can one take advantage of using um, solar? Um, thank you so much uh, for that question, Dumi. And um, I think Vishay can also add on to this. Um, I think most of us are wanting to go off grid. We use the term off grid quite loosely um, until you actually get to see the cost of uh, going off grid. Um, we have seen that the price of solar has reduced over the years, um, obviously because of demand in the market, right? We've seen um, a lot of movement at global um, around people being conscious of um, climate climate risk, uh, people wanting to go off grid and, and use uh, alternative energy sources. So because of the demand, we've actually seen the price of solar decrease. Um, I'll allow VCH to also add on to that. Yeah, correct. And I think just to touch on what you just mentioned, Portia, you're quite correct. You know, over the last decade, we've seen the price of these technologies decrease quite nicely. But despite this reduction, you know, the initial cost of a PV system are relatively high when compared to non-renewable energy sources such as diesel generators and coal-powered uh, station fuel, I mean, fossil fuel-generated electricity. However, unlike non-renewable energy sources, PV has no fuel cost, no operational cost, and very low maintenance cost. Mm. And it should therefore be considered as a long-term investment. I mean, when you look at the cost of energy, which is defined as a RAND per kilowatt, from a PV system, it's it's dependent on the size of the system and the total cost that is, you know, including capital costs and operational maintenance. And but this must be viewed over the system's lifespan. So typically, larger PV systems offer lower energy costs because of the you know when you have to compare to that of smaller systems 
due to the lower installation cost, but the financial feasibility of PV systems will depend on the cost of energy that the PV system offer over its lifespan. And it is being lower than the energy cost that one would incur from consuming from either ESCOM or your local municipality over the same time period. And while also taking into account the expected annual tariff increases. I mean, just to shed a light there, we've seen an average over the last decade of close to 10.5% increase year on year. I mean, this just year, you know, ESCOM was asking for close to 25% of a tariff increase. I mean, we know that they won a court case bid against NERSA to claw back for those years of lower tariff increases. And that amounted to close to 69 billion rand, which will, they will have to recover from the consumer. So taking all of that into consideration and obviously doing the sums, solar PV over its lifespan is, uh, of its duration of operation, it works out to be much cheaper than what we currently pay. No, sure. Quite insightful. And I'm sure anybody who's looking at, you know, adopting solar energy or, or using it um, is probably thinking, rethinking that decision. Um, let me come back to you, Portia. Um, being a portfolio manager, product portfolio manager, you know, in APSA Home Loans, can one get um, financing for, for solar? And if not, are there other available channels for them to secure finance if they want to implement it? Absolutely. Um, to me, and I think, you know, a lot of us have seen the quotations, um, you know, that we get from various solar installers. Um, and the first thing that you ask yourself is, where am I going to get the money to pay for the solar solution? Um, you know, at some point, we will discuss the different options that are available to customers in terms of solar. Um, however, depending on how much you need um, from a finance perspective, you can look at various uh, products that um, the banks offer, right? So for someone who already has an existing home loan um, and the home loan um, has been with the bank for quite a while, they've had this property for quite a while, we know that property appreciates in value. So you may find that you do have equity in your property. We discussed this, um, I think, in one of our podcasts, um, you know, what equity actually means. So you could actually approach your bank and, um, and apply for a further advance or a re-advance. So a further advance basically means that you are registering um, another bond against your property based on the increased value of the property. And a re-advance is um, the difference between your spending balance at the time and your original loan amount. Um, and the bank will actually extend this, these funds to you in cash, right? So that you can pay towards the solar solution. We do also have um, uh, unsecured lending products like your credit card or your personal loan, if you feel that you don't want to access equity in your property, um, or let's say you uh, don't want to um, use a, a home loan product uh, to finance a solar solution. Um, and then I think ultimately, if you do want to start saving towards your solar solution, you can, right? Um, um, if you don't want to be paying any interest charges um, towards any financing options. I think lastly, one of the products that consumers don't generally know exists is when you switch your home loan from one bank to another and you have equity in your property, you can actually apply to switch your home loan and access the equity in your property as well um, to, pay for, to pay for the finance um, of your solar solution. Thank you so much for that. Fisher Elit, now Portia has given us the money. She's given us the green light to say, you can now do this to your home. What are the solar options that are available to homeowners? And you know, the, the, the different solutions that are available in the market now, where, where does one start? Yeah, so I guess this is a very important point, right? Yeah. Especially when customers need to educate themselves around the various types of solutions. For example, I mean, if you need to survive load shedding and you don't have a large amount to invest, that is, into solar, but we've got Porsche there to assist, you may consider an uninterrupted power supply, which is referred to as an inverter in some instances. And this solution basically won't save you electricity and it doesn't use solar energy though, but the electricity from the grid or from where your utility provider is stored into a battery. And that is then used in the, in, in the instances of a power outages. Alternatively, you can consider a hybrid solution. And that is basically a solar panels that are included as part of the solution, which includes battery energy storage. And this energy is then used to power you or provide you with electricity during power outages. This option is basically the most common one as it helps you to reduce your energy cost 
as well as becoming resilient to that of load shedding. Alternatively, we see solutions such as off-grids, and these are larger solar systems and are, are required in terms of backup for an hour or, or you know, longer durations from an hour perspective. And these systems basically are integrated with alternatives such as a generator, but obviously there's steps that you need to take when you are going off grid to ensure that you remain powered during those times of low shedding. For instance, you know, you need to take uh, steps for your home in terms of making, making it a bit more green, such as using LED lighting to reduce your consumption, changing your electric stoves to that of gas, and changing your geysers to either solar geysers. And in that case, you reduce the amount of your solar component, which then becomes a bit more easier and palatable in terms of having that solution adopted in, from a CapEx perspective. It's always advisable though, to contact a credible installer, to conduct a site visit and to conduct an energy audit to determine your unique household needs. And they can recommend a solution that suits your needs. And some install installers can basically recommend the bigger inverter that allows you to upgrade your system over time. And that's the beauty part about these solutions is that they are modular and they can increase in size depending on what your budget allows you for. No, thank you so much for that, Vishal. I'll jump in to, quickly to a question that we received on social media. Shakong Shakong uh, Kaurelo is asking, is renewable energy um, is, is the renewable energy generation regulated? And if yes, what is the threshold? Um, he has a second question or follow-up rather that says, can community schemes also uh, opt to go off the grid completely? And what would the average um, demand for a scheme be? Um, I know this is a couple of questions in one, but can we try to tackle them to say, um, how can they approach it? Excellent. So I think I'll take this one because it's technical and it will align yes, to <laughs> what I address on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we talk residential and, you know, we talk about the size of the system, this is a regulated environment. So it's regulated by municipalities and it's the Energy Regulation Act, together with that of what NERSA, which is our national energy regulator, that sets out in terms of how does these installations need to abide to ensure that it's legal. And we call it an SSEG, which is small scale embedded generation and those are rules and regulations that are set out by the municipality, as well as ESCOM having their own uh, application and rules that needs to be followed. But generally for a household, it's dependent on the size of your circuit breaker. For instance, if you have a 60 amp circuit breaker, you are limited to the size of the system that you would be installing. And I think that amounts to about 60 to 75% of your breaker size. When it comes to larger clients who, and I mean, talking to your scheme that you just mentioned. So depending on the substation and the transformer that's supplying that, uh, that area with electricity, you can only go up to a maximum of 75% of the size of that transformer. And that's the limitation that is set out. For those schemes to install, and we see a lot of, uh, you know, what we call independent power producers, they basically install these systems and they sell power, which is called power purchase agreements, either to the municipality or to the off-take itself, which could be the you know, individual from a residential perspective. So there is those options that are available. And we found quite a bit of that, especially in my space, where it's the larger size uh, projects. And we do fund them and we're seeing that they're gaining quite a good traction, especially from a community perspective because they have land that's available where they install these solar farms and then sell off this electricity to the consumer who runs off the same network at a much cheaper rate at close to 25% less than what they would be procuring from their utility provider. So yes, those options are available. And those are the limitations, unfortunately, that we see from a regulation perspective. 
sure. No, thank you so much for that. Very informative. Um, let's just then talk, rounding our conversation up tonight, how much uh, maintenance is required with solar? You know, with future, um, what are the future costs and maybe even maybe a, a, an affordability scenario that we can put out on the table? And I would like both of you to chip in here um, because because of the technicality, but also with the finances. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very um, aware that, you know, a lot of people go into this and they don't know um, how much it's going to cost. So you, let's say I've already gotten an advance on my uh, loan or I've, I've added my second one, but I need more money. Um, what happens in the case? Do I have to go to an extra source? And even with that, are there specific things that are needed with the maintenance, uh, Vache? So um, you, you can both tackle that one, please. Pusha, let me start with you. I think I'll, I'll allow Vishe to start um, because I think from a technical perspective, um, he's best suited to answer. I'll add on uh, to our okay. end. Thanks. Definitely. Vishay? I'll touch a bit on the financing side. So obviously, if we financed you for your system and you are considering to increase the size, we will definitely look at it. You know, we basically look at it because each client has his own profile and his own requirements. And we model these and we have the tools available to do so from a bank perspective to see what the savings is and what the benefit is going to be onto the client. Obviously, giving us the comfort, knowing that the client is paying towards an asset which can generate in excess of 20 years of electricity and is paying towards an asset that's going to make him basically sustainable, but also hedge against that of tariff increases, making his budget a bit more easier to manage and to basically pay off the loan that is required. When it comes to the maintenance side, you know, rooftops and fixed ground mount systems require minimal maintenance, especially associated to the cost, other than the occasional cleaning that is required. So most PV modules on the market today also comes in with a warranty in excess of 20 years, both from a performance as well as a product warranty, meaning that the power output will not go below 80% of its rated power over that 25, 20 to 25 years. And this obviously varies depending on the product choice that is uh, being considered. However, on the components such as your inverters, that generally comes with a five to seven year warranty. And we're seeing the market change now to a 10 year warranty. And coming back to the cleaning, which is the maintenance required, we are seeing some good development in terms of technology whereby some of these modules now come with self-cleaning glass that is basically or lamination that is on those panels, which then self-cleans itself when there's rain. So it's actually, when you look at it from a maintenance perspective, it's actually very low from a cost perspective. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Um, and Osha? if I may add as well, um, I think, you know, in the context of finance as well, um, consumers need to also think about the benefits that they're getting from installing solar, right? So for argument's sake, you decide to take up a further advance. Um, you do know that you will be paying interest charges towards that further advance um, and there will be an installment that you need to pay. Um, generally, a lot of um, solar installers are able to illustrate to you what the saving will be. So um, if you are paying, let's say, a thousand rand a month on electricity, but with solar installation done in your property, your electricity costs are reduced to 300 rand per month. And you're only paying, let's say, 500 rand um, towards the finance um, from the bank, right? That saving is actually what you should start to look at, um, you know, on a monthly basis. And then over time, when you've actually paid up the finance uh, that you took up from the bank uh, to finance the solar solution, you actually, be see, you actually see that you've actually started saving a lot of money. Um, you know, I, I may not be able to illustrate it, um, you know, because we are on a, on, a, on a podcast, but I think calculators are available to assist our customers in understanding um, the investment and the return as well. Thanks to me. No, thank you so much for that. And thank you, Vishay, as well as you, to you, Portia, for joining us tonight and shedding so much light um, in terms of solar power and, you know, renewable energies that one can use. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Have a good evening. It's only a pleasure and, you know, you're more than welcome and those viewers to reach out if you ever need advice. That's what we, that's the role we play. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Well, that was an enlightening interview that we just had there on solar power. But before we leave, here are some solar power highlights with five fast facts.
You can save money on your electricity bill by going off the grid. Even though it can be pricey to set up, the return on investment is well worth it. Solar power is one of the cleanest and most sustainable energy sources. It doesn't rely on fossil fuels or any of their nasty byproducts. The Earth receives approximately 174 power watts of solar radiation every single day, and around 30% of the solar radiation that strikes the Earth is absorbed by its upper at at atmosphere and reflected into space. The remaining amount is absorbed by clouds, oceans, as well as the land. Off-grid solar systems can store power during the day for use at night or on cloudy days. Grid-connected solar systems also allow you to use solar during the day. Solar panels and LED lights are constructed in the same manner. When exposed to bright lights, the LED produces a small amount of power, and solar panels light up when fed the proper amount of current similar to LED lights. If you're still interested in learning more, then you are at the right place. But that is about it for tonight. Thank you so much once again for showing us love on Facebook. We really, really appreciate it. And the winner for tonight's 500 Rand cash prize is, drum roll please, Smoothie So SMK. Thank you so much for engaging with us on the timeline. And we really, really appreciate it on the comment section rather. Thank you so much. We will see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. From myself, Dumi, and the Private Property Podcast family. Have a good one. <laughs>